Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room where today we're going to be doing a little bit of millinery. That's right, we're dipping our toe into some hat making here today. Now I'm not going to be starting on the deep end, we're not jumping in with blocking hats or anything very official today. I'm just going to go ahead and try and recreate this 1940s hat because I was flipping through this Alden's catalog and kept seeing this hat pop up and it just seemed so perfectly ridiculous and especially with these little loops on the top and all this jazz. So today I'm going to go ahead and try and recreate this tilted sort of toy hat toppery thing here. But I also had two other hats I ended up refashioning or kind of sprucing up as well. So I have three hats uh, in this kind of general style to show you today. And then we'll be getting into some more serious hat making next time. Do leave specific styles of hats you'd like to see me try and recreate or make here on the channel in the comments below as well. But we'll be starting off with this 1940s recreation. So let's jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom and get started. All right, here we are, and I'm starting off with some rather fun ribbon here. This is uh, some stuff I found on Etsy that seems to be used quite a lot in vintage millinery. This is velvet tubing, so it's like a velvet ribbon, but it's like a big, big noodle of velvet, basically, that we're going to be using for this first little tilted hat style today. And then I have these buckram discs that you can also get online. I'm going to be linking to all of the supplies for this first hat here that I'll be making, the copy of the Alden's hat in the description of this video, so if you're interested in these materials that I was able to pick up entirely on Etsy, you can check those out as well. These are just little blocked buckram hat discs, and I'm cutting a length of millinery wire here. This is 19 gauge millinery wire, which is a bit uh, stiffer than other normal wire, I guess. Um, and I'm cutting it twice uh, the circumference... The circumference? Yeah, the circumference of my little circle here. Twice the circumference, plus a little bit of overlap, about an inch and a half of overlap as well. And I'm going to cover all of that wire in this velvet tubing ribbon here. So I'm just sticking that wire into its new home, or wiring the velvet, I suppose. And this style of hat is pretty common from the 1940s here, these little discs with this wire loop to help hold them onto the head, and then covered in uh, feathers, flowers, all kinds of different stuff you could stick on top of these. They are kind of like a fascinator slash hat. This is where, like, all the horrible fascinators that happen now, which I'm sorry, but many of them are very much not not the one. Um, this is where that kind of trend began, and it's just devolved since then, I feel like, but I do prefer the 1940s ones. They're just as ridiculous, but way more fun. So I'm just closing up one end of this velvet tubing. I cut the velvet a little bit longer than the wire, and then we will sew this onto my little disc here to create the kind of hat base that seems to be pretty common at this time. Our hat here that I'm copying from this Alden's catalog does say a it is a bewitching flower disc, so I think it is attached to a little disc like this, not too dissimilar. A vision of loveliness to make you look your very prettiest and most appealing. All abloom with exquisite cotton posies, topped with two black rayon velvet loops, rayon velvet covered bicycle clip at the back, a froth of fine rayon veiling for a misty touch of glamour. Colors are dawn pink, peace blue, sun gold, or valor rose, or white. It was only $2.98 at the time, and sadly I was not able to find a fine rayon veiling this time because black veiling is becoming rare and rarer. Now to attach this wire, this velvet covered wire to the edge of my little circle here. I am just using blanket stitch here, which looks like this. I found a little drawing quickly online of what blanket stitch is. But you just stitch around the edge here. I'm going about every half inch and I'm pulling pretty tightly uh, to keep this on. Of course, I have to restart a new thread every once in a while. I am using a millinery needle for this, which should be able to be found in like the needle section at any crafter um, sewing place because they're not used just for millinery anymore. But it's kind of like a stiffer and longer needle. I'm a little bit thicker. I'm not sure what the gauge is on this. I'm not particular enough to know. But I am just using all-purpose polyester thread for this as well. Of course, in proper, proper, like, couture millinery, in nice millinery, we always use cotton thread. But in slapdash millinery, <clears throat> what I'm doing today, all-purpose is fine for this purpose, you know? But I'm just, again, blanket stitching all the way around, stitching that wired ribbon, uh, wired velvet around the bottom edge of my circle of buckram here. Again, these little buckram discs are pretty easy to find now since people make fascinators quite a lot. So you can find these from hat supply places on Etsy or online, or even if you have a hat supply shop in your town, which lucky you, because that's very rare. Luckily here in Denver, we do have Allen's Fabric and Bridal, so we do have some millinery materials available if you'd like to shop in person. I highly recommend them. I will actually link their website in the description below here as well. I don't know if they have little preformed hat bases like this, but you can certainly get them online, and I'll link to these exact ones I'm using here in the description, like I said. These little things can be easily blocked if you have a hat block, but I know not many people do, so I wanted to start off with something that didn't require any, uh, like, kind of unattainable materials, because hat blocks are an expensive investment, usually, um, so they're not really uh, available to all, 
So I'm starting off with something that doesn't require one. But we can block little discs like this sometime on a hat block too, uh, because these are very easy to make, easy enough. But if you are in a, in a rush or just feeling lazy like I am, why make them from scratch when you can pick them up online? Eek! And they do come in different colors as well. You don't have to have black like I have here. But of course, I wear a lot of black, so it matches everything in my wardrobe. And I'm just closing up the rayon velvet ribbon here at the other end. And then I'm going to overlap that where I started to sew this onto the disc. Because it's the spring uh, of the coil of wire. Because this is all one piece of wire, there's enough spring and coil to it that it um, kind of hinges open and helps hold the little hat onto your head. Um, so that's why I have this full spring that goes around the, like, uh, the distance of around the disc twice. Hopefully you see what I'm saying. So that, like, coil of wire, the spring in it, the tension of it, helps keep the hat on to your head, so it's very useful. And as you can see, it's very simple to make a little hat base like this, but they were quite common in the 1940s. And little strange hats piled with stuff, uh, especially flowers, but also feathers, and if you have ever seen Bez Ben hats, which is a hat designer, um, from like the mid-century era, they had ha all kinds of stuff on those hats, um, like toys and cats and like bugs and fish and all kinds of weird wackadoodle little things. But uh, flower hats like this were actually pretty common, and here we can actually, while I reference my images that I'm trying to copy, we can look at some other flower-ish hats from the time. So here are some actresses and some extant examples of this style of floral, huge floral pillbox, I guess, or just tilted proliferation of petals, you know, pro pro proliferation of petals. It's hard to say. Um, but I just have these. I would, I guess these are kind of dahlias. These are vintage millinery flowers. I didn't make these flowers today, although we know I am kind of interested in exploring that, so perhaps in the future. But these are vintage flowers, again, that I was able to purchase on Etsy, so I will link to these flowers in the description below as well. Again, you could just put anything you want on top of these, and you could glue things onto a base like this um, as the Perhaps, you know, the, the uh, normal Pinterest DIY would suggest, but I'm going to go ahead and suggest you stitch things on. So just throw in a couple of tacks, a couple of stitches along the bottom row of petals. Secure the flower with some thread. And the nice thing about stitching these things, sort of things on is you could always take out the stitches and trim this in a new way. Whereas if you, like, put a big glob of hot glue up here, it'll work. Um, it'll be a little bit heavier, which is kind of annoying as well. It's nice to keep hats as light as possible especially if you, you know, plan to wear them properly, for more than just pictures, I suppose. Um, but you've got a big uh, glob of glue up here, and no matter, like, if you take the flowers off later on, it's still going to have that glob of glue possibly mucking up your hat base, and so that's... But that's less fun, because you can't retrim your hat base in the future, if you'd ever like to. Again, the 1940s had some pretty ridiculous and over-the-top hats going on that wouldn't have seemed that out of place in, like, fancier bits of society, I suppose. If you wore this around, you know, where I live in Colorado back in the 40s, people would probably look at you quite funny. But in town, I think that these kind of wackadoodle hats would be quite acceptable, I suppose. Or they must have been anyhow, because strange hats like this were available in Alden's and in Montgomery Wards, and not just in New York City, you could order these from anywhere. Or to anywhere, I suppose. But I'm just playing around with these flowers. I didn't actually have... I thought three flowers would be enough, but it turned out I did need a fourth flower here. And I did have a fourth flower, I just had a white one instead of a yellow one, so I'm going to tack the white one onto the back very lightly, and then hopefully grab one more of these yellow flowers to be able to sew on a yellow one back there. But that's the nice thing about sewing these on, is that I can go ahead and snip off the white one, and sew, or replace it with a yellow one. Now for these little funny bunny ears and velvet, which are just ridiculous. I'm going to cut some more of my millinery wire here. I'm just using a wire cutter to cut that, by the way. I'm just cutting this about, I don't know, five inches long, maybe? And then I will again cover this wire with this velvet tubing ribbon, like so, and just cut the ribbon a little bit longer than the wire, just to make these funny little doodads to go on top of these. This hat is ridiculous. Um, I, I felt like making this one because I, I read all these old catalogs all the time, or flip through them, and I see these wild hats, and it's kind of, they're rare and hard to find for some reason. Um, of course, all 1940s hats are quite rare these days in general, and we all know how I like a hat. And I don't have anything of this particular level of ridiculousness, so we're fixing that today. But I will just secure the velvet ribbon uh, to create these little loops here. And the nice thing about having wire is that, especially this stiff 19 gauge wire, is it stands up very well on its own. And it's, you know, very bendable and moldable, so you can make these into any shape you wanted. 
if you wanted to have them be little funny squares at the top of this or triangles. Um, it'd be very easy to do something like that. I don't assume many of you will want to make a hat like this. Um, because I don't assume many of you are as silly as I am. But maybe you are. Maybe you're more silly than me. So I'm just securing these little loops together, kind of off camera. Sorry about that. Just referencing the image again and seeing if I can stick these in amongst the flowers. And then once again, I will just tack all this down to the hat base itself. The nice thing about the velvet um, is that, of course, like being a fabric, it's very easy to stitch through and stitch on to secure. So I have my little, and again, the wire helps these stand up so well. It wasn't actually very hard to get them to do that. They, they tended to want to stand up on their own, so didn't do anything fancy for that. Again, I'm just kind of doing messy stitches in here. Nothing particular or very fancy. Um, and then I will just tack this white flower onto the back here because, alas, I did not realize I was going to need four of these big blooms. I'd gotten a white one for a different project. But, alas, it will live on this hat for a little while, and then hopefully I'll be able to pick up one more of these yellow flowers to replace it with. And then it will be all yellow. Not that I don't like the yellow and white together, I think it looks fine as it is as well. You can see I had all my hat making stuff kind of out on the blue table of doom over here. I kind of got everything out and started placing things into piles that I thought would work for various different hats. And that's how I discovered a couple of things that could use some re-trimming in here as well. But here is my finished little silly tilted circle of, what do they call it? Bewitching flower disc. This is my finished bewitching flower disc and uh, I think you will agree it looks quite a lot like this image here. I chose to pair this very funny hat with a black rayon 1940s style dress, a celluloid brooch, a crocheted clutch that actually a viewer crocheted for me, so thank you. Um, it's very nice to have a white clutch, especially one that's crisply white because it's new. And then rouged blue gloves here and then just a black shoe. We all know I usually like to match my accessories, but I don't have uh, a full set of light blue, a full set of yellow accessories, so I was kind of mixing and matching my accessories here, but I still like this outfit. I would totally wear it out and about, maybe to tea or something, if I had friends who wouldn't mind me showing up with this ridiculous of a hat on, which I'm not sure I do. But in addition to making that little tilted hat today, I had a couple of other hats I wanted to spruce up. I found this in with my hat making supplies. I made it a couple of years ago and I do like it, but I always felt like maybe it was a little too much or something, but I've realized, no, no, it wasn't too much. It was not enough. That was the answer. So I had more of these little feather uh, like marabou feather puffs and I decided to go ahead and try this hat on and then hold them up to the hat and pin them where I thought I would like them and just add a whole bunch more feathers to this hat. I just needed a bunch more feathers on this to create the perfect 1940s ridiculous cocktail hat. If the first hat here was a bit of a daytime hat this is what you would wear perhaps in the evening and feather hats were actually very popular throughout the 20th century or the early part of the 20th century but especially in the 1940s as well i never seen this very glamorous photo here in the center of uh, Rosalind Russell wearing this fabulous feather hat, but we have, of course, Lucille Ball here and Marlena Dietrich and Joan Crawford. Everyone's rocking the feather look, and I want to get in on it. So I've got this ridiculous feather hat now. I kind of want to wear it out for, like, my birthday this summer or something, because if you can't... if People wear tiaras on their birthday out and about all the time, and if people can wear a tiara, then I can wear this ridiculous thing, can't I? I should think so. And this one does have that fine, misty veiling on it, which again is harder to come by now. I feel like uh, vintage hat veiling is hard enough to find, uh, vintage materials in general, but finding black veiling seems to be quite difficult now, and people have raised the prices because it just doesn't exist anymore. And the new hat veiling, which you can see some of in the corner, upper corner of the screen here, the new hat veiling, a lot of it is nylon uh, or like other plastics, and it doesn't drape and hang as nicely as the vintage stuff does. So if you fi can find vintage rayon or silk veiling, it is much nicer, so, ooh, but harder to find and much more uh, expensive because it's practically collectible at this point. But I'm again just using some messy stitches to stitch on these feathers in the tradition of old because you know, if you've ever looked inside a piece of antique or vintage stuff, it's not like people were always using the finest of stitches in the world. You just want to stitch things to get the job done, not necessarily, you know, the nicest way possible, especially because if you're looking inside my hat, what, what what's going on there, you know? No one's ever going to see this nonsense except for you and I. And then I do have this length of pink, like very soft pink ribbon here that I'm going to make a nice big rosette bow to put over like the end of these feathers here because it is kind of messy down here. These feathers, as soon as I let go, like they puff up and they totally hide the base here. 
but uh, I'm gonna put a big bow back there as well too because you really can't there's no I there's no version of this that is overboard honestly you can really go quite hard I mean if you look at some of the images that I've included in this one or uh, I'll even link to my Pinterest board that's called hats 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 <laughs> where I just pin all the hats I like or want to make in the future and you can see there are some really dramatic hats out there in this world I'm just taking this bow and looping it up by the way and stitching it down again just doing everything by thread here or with thread I'm just looping things in a very like loose and casual way here to create a again rather rumpled rosette of ribbon here to stitch onto the back of this hat there are a lot of hats from the 1940s that are trimmed exclusively with ribbon in different ways so you can get quite creative with ribbon even if it's it could be harder to find nice feather or vintage flower trimmings but of course you could always either find a way to make your own as I did with the cicada gown earlier make some flowers yourself or just use a uh, ribbon which of course is a, something that is more easily found I should think compared to everything else feathers and veiling are hard to come by but ribbon every craft store has ribbon all right just pin that on and see how I like it and then I'll just do some more stitches through the base underneath the loops of this bow here as well again just tacking everything on with thread so that it's all changeable later if I decide to retrim this pillbox it's just a uh, very simple black pillbox at the base of this and I'll be showing how to make a pillbox like this soon, but if you just can't wait, um, this pillbox I actually made over on my blog, so I will link to the blog posts where I showed how to make this little hat uh, originally the first time several years ago over on my blog, so if you don't mind a static DIY, you can see how to make this pillbox before I get to it. I'm going to make another one very similar next month, hopefully, here on the channel. But here's my newly refurbed, refeathered hat here, and I do think it looks quite ridiculously fabulous. I feel like I should be an extra at like a nightclub scene in the like 19, in some 1940s movie where like, you know, I don't know, Rita Hayworth is performing, but like there's a bunch of people sitting at the tables. I'm one of the people sitting at the tables, you know? Again, I have rouged white gloves with this, a um, vintage handbag with rhinestones here, and then giant dress clips that I found last year. Oh my gosh, they're so great. I love these dress clips. And then lastly, just one more little flower tilted topper today. I had this, this is a hat block here, by the way. I keep saying hat block as if you know what that is. This is a wooden hat block. It's just the shape of a hat that you use to form the, like to mold the whatever material you're using to make the hat into the shape you would like. So this is a little button shaped hat block and this is a little button shaped hat made on that block several years ago. In fact, I pulled the blue feathers, the blue feather puffs that I used for that last hat I pulled them off of this base because I just, it wasn't doing it for me. And now I'm going to use this base as a base for these funny flowers. These flowers, again, are one of my favorite combinations of like vintage flowers that you'll see sometimes where it's poppies, like buttercups, cornflowers, and daisies all together. It's a very common pairing. And these are like little corsages. They're actually pinned. They have like a pin back on them. I'm sure that uh, like you could buy this at a millinery shop and you could, you know, buy one to pin onto your dress like I was wearing it earlier in the intro to this. Um, and then you could buy some to put on your hat if you wanted to, wherever you wanted to. And then the way I uh, found these was that I actually found a hat for sale that I did not like the style of the hat at all, but it had about like six of these things pinned on it, and I wanted the flowers. So I bought the hat just to take these off of there. And the hat actually had a couple of flowers attached to it that were like obviously the original flowers, and someone had pinned all these corsages onto it. And I was like, cool, I'm going to pin those all off and use them for different things. So I kept a few loose to use for other projects, and then I stuck three of these little bouquets onto this little button hat base. You can see I used the same loop of wire technique to be able to hold this onto the head. And now I have yet another ridiculous tilted flower hat to wear with my 1940s dresses. And so here is the same dress again, same black rayon dress that I made several, several years ago. And I have a little beaded handbag here and some green gloves to match the green stems of the flowers, and then again I've just pinned on one of the corsages to wear with its matching hat. I hope you enjoyed seeing how these rather over-the-top and silly 1940s inspired styles came together today. Hopefully I can work up the courage to actually wear one of these three out and about this summer because they are rather extra, even for me. Thank you for watching today, and I will see you back here again for more sewing and vintage fashion real soon. Bye!